So here we have our basic HTML page. This is very, very basic, not going to display anything. So we want to start looking at how we're going to fill in our head and our body tag to provide some content and some information. So let's take a look at our head, for example. Now our head is going to mostly contain what we refer to as metadata, and that's data about our web page. Now, some of this is going to be viewable by the user and some of it's not. The first and most common tag we're going to see is the title tag. You'll notice it has an open and closing tag, and inside of it we put the content we want to see. This is what's going to display in our browser tab when we look at our web page. Now, this used to be a lot more prevalent when we could only display one web page in a browser at a time. Now that we can have tabs, you might have dozens of web pages open, it's much harder to see. Our title should be short, descriptive of what our page is about. In fact, in a lot of cases, we're only going to see the first 20 to 30 characters because of the tabs, sometimes even less. Now, historically, a lot of search engines have used the title tag to help identify what pages are about. However, they're only going to look at the first few characters of your title tag. Depending upon the search engine and other things like that, you're limited to probably around 60 characters of what you're going to see. So keep that in mind. This is not a place to make something long and wordy and do what they call keyword stuff and just typing anything and everything about your web page into your title tag. That doesn't help you. Let's look at some other things that you're going to commonly see. We mentioned that the head tags contain a lot of metadata. Well, there's actually a meta tag. You can see it like this, and it's made up of two parts. Mostly, it's going to be name, and we're going to specify a value for our name. For example, author and then the contents. Such as Walter Wimberly. Most meta tags follow this name and content value. And these have a lot of purposes, especially for different types of search engines. If I had an internal, what we sometimes refer to as enterprise search engine or a search engine that is specific to our organization, it might use this metadata to help identify who the authors and editors of certain pages are, some special content to organize and group information, and this just provides a faster way of finding business data inside of a system. Huge content management systems, huge enterprise search engines, these all look at this type of data. Now, for us and the standard search engines, this isn't as important. And that's why it's not required. And if your web page is missing metadata, it's going to be okay. I do want to show you one specific meta tag that you probably do want to include. And this is meta with the attribute of a char set or character set. This says what character set do we need to use in order to display our information on our web page. If we're using a character set other than UTF-8, for a non-English language, for example, it would be specified here. Now let's look at some tags that are going to be used that aren't meta tags, but will help display information inside of our web page. One of the most common tags that's not a meta tag that you're going to see is a link tag. A link tag helps us link external data into our web page. In this case, a style sheet, which helps us to define how our content inside the web page is going to look. You'll notice it has a REL attribute for relationship, and the relationship is that this is going to be a style sheet. We have href, or hyperlink reference, which tells us where the file can be referenced, and then we specify the type, that is a text slash CSS. Depending upon the external type of file that we'll be referencing, these values will all change. Of course, the href is going to vary based upon where our file is and what our file name is, but the relationship and type will also change depending upon if it's a different type of file. The last type of tag that you're going to find is a script tag, and it always has a closing tag. 
This is a little different from many of our head tags, like our meta and our link, which do not have a closing tag. In CyberScript tag, we can either write some JavaScript. This is going to be used to interactively control our web page. Or inside the opening tag, we can specify a source. Inside a source, we can reference an external file. Now, we cannot mix an external file and embedded code, so we have to choose one or the other. The other thing I do want to note is that while a lot of developers put the script tag inside of the head, for speed consideration, it's much faster for a web page to download and render if the script tag is inside the body, specifically at the lower part of the body. And that's because a script tag is known as a blocking tag. And what that basically means is that no other tag or external information will download while the script code is being downloaded and parsed. Not only that, no other part of the web page is going to render until this is completed. So anytime we can move our scripts down to the bottom of our HTML page, and the lower we can, the better, the faster our web page is going to appear on the screen for our end user. Now, if we have a small script file that's only a kilobyte or two in size, it's probably not that big of a deal. But as web pages become much more dynamic and become larger and larger, we can sometimes run into script files, which are hundreds of kilobytes in size. And that takes a long time to both download and parse. So therefore, we want to try to get into a good habit of moving our script tags down to the bottom of our page.